this fly is uh, what I call my one hackle nymph fly. So the, uh, the, I guess the origin of this fly was, it comes from my uh, interest in soft hackle flies or spider patterns and traditional North Country spiders. And um, you know, when you tie those and you fish them and, and you pull them out of the water, you find that the hackle itself collapses back down you know, over the, over the fly body. And um, you know, I was sort of sitting there one day looking at it and thinking, well, why not start the fly that way? And, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and the next thing I know, I've got a one-hackle nymph. Now, I find these really good to use um, in the bigger sizes, so like, you know, four mil beads, three mil beads, or even a bead with a bit of extra weight. Um, you know, these things start to sink really, really quickly, and you get a little bit more guts in them than something like a perdigon. I'm not that I dislike perdigons, but... Um, you know, I find that this has got a little bit extra sort of thing. But anyway, so it's a pretty straightforward fly to tie. It, it has a little bit of a weird technique, and I'll, I'll talk you through that um, as we get going into tying it. But at um, but any anyway, rate, that's what it is. So the um, materials for this <clears throat> is um, a hook, a jig hook. I'm using a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using a Dohuku J hook. And, uh, and on this, I've got a uh, four millimeter bead. So uh, size 12 hook. Now you can tie them down to probably a 14. <clears throat> Excuse me, anything bigger, than, uh, sorry, anything smaller than that and, and, the, and the tying of the fly gets a little bit awkward. But uh, I usually tie them on a size 12 um, with uh, four mil beads, uh, a, four, a three mil bead or, and a little bit of extra wire and then a straight three mil bead. So, but, uh, but anyway. And size 12 G hook, four mil bead. The uh, the thread I use for this is um, I use nano silk, simplify nano silk. Um, ideally, you want a nice, fine, strong silk. Uh, sorry, strong thread, uh, whatever that may happen to be, whatever you happen to have. The uh, the body itself is is as the name suggests, is a single a single hackle. And what I use uh, is generally the secondary under coverts on um, on game birds. So this is a woodcock, uh, dyed golden olive, and um, but you can use uh, you know grouse, partridge, um, that sort of thing. Um, you can use hen, um, although you need to be fairly selective with the uh, type of hen hackle you use. Um, you'll see why when you tie the fly, you want the hackle to form the body and hen hackles can sometimes be a little bit too thin, a little bit too sparse. So it's, uh, it's probably better to go with a, um, with a game bird, but, uh, but anyway. Now, the hackle itself, you, when you tie it in, you want the hackle to be um, the length of the shank, or so the, the fibres of the hackle to be the length of the shank plus about five mil. So something looks around about that on a size 12 hook, um, and you'll see how it all comes together in a minute. But uh, so you would, you know, don't be shy. You can use some of your bigger fibers or bigger feathers that uh, that you might not necessarily used uh, use for other patterns. And uh, and actually, if you if you struggle with it, you can even do a split thread method with the hackle. Um, but you need to get right up tight on the butts, and uh, and you can hackle it that way. Uh, the other thing we use for the fly is a fine wire. I'm using hens, uh, just hens. Uh, fine wire, this is 0 0.09 um, and it's a brown, but you can use whatever fine wire you happen to have. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it's nice and fine. And then the collar itself is, uh, is Hens Micro Chenille <coughs> um, Cactus. Uh, this one I'm going to do in hot orange. But uh, the other ones I've had good success with is the uh, the sort of the hot purple, and um, and the I don't know the root beer sort of color as well. But uh, but I mean yeah, if you got these sorts of things, you can try it. Now if you don't have the cactus chenille, I find it works better with the cactus chenille. Or the to the actual fly comes together better with the cactus chenille. But if you don't have that, you could use just a very small pinch of um, say ice dubbing um, or something along those lines. So that's um that's pretty much all we use.
it's a pretty straightforward fly to tie. Now, there'll be a part of it that gets a bit awkward, and, and when I get to it, I'll point out exactly why. Um, my big Muppet fingers will probably get in the way. But anyway, to start with, um, hook in the vise, bead on the hook, and I'll just come in with the thread behind the bead and tie on the thread, trim away that waist there, and then just sort of lock the th bead at the back there just to get out of the way. Now, the next bit we're going to do is uh, run down some, um, some wire. Um, catch on the wire, just bind the bead, and then, oop, and then uh, run that down, lock that down. And you want to bring the wire all the way down to the very, very bend, um, as far as you sort of can, right, right on the bend, just as it goes to turn, basically where the thread ends up being, uh, where the, uh, the barb may be on a uh, barbed hook. Now, if you're going to add lead, you can add lead to this now. Um, and I'd do, you know, sort of maybe half a dozen turns of lead and, uh, and bring it up here. But you need to leave a little bit of space with the lead um, just behind the eye so you can get the hackle on. Otherwise, it gets a little bit awkward. But uh, half a dozen turns of lead just in here can add a little bit extra weight if that's what you want to do. So once we've got the wire in, we just park that out of the way there. And we'll just bring the thread back to the front. And from here, what I'm going to do is catch in the, uh, the hackle. Now, all I'm going to do here with the hackle is, uh, is take away these shorter, fluffy fibers that I, I don't particularly want um, or anything you don't reckon you're going to use. And you can be fairly generous with the hackle. Um, you know, just, you basically use it all up. So, um, you know, you want a fair bit. And... Uh, we're just going to tease those fibres back so that we're left with um, the point. And then I'm just going to come in here, I'm just going to trim away the, uh, the tip there so that I'm left with a small triangle just behind, uh, sorry, just there to catch in. And I'm going to come in, I'm going to catch this in directly behind the bead with several turns just to hold it. Now, the next step is to essentially hackle the fly. Excuse me, I'm just going to get my pliers. And uh, and look, you don't have to be you don't have to be very special with this. Um, it's you know it's not a spider. It's not going to be showing. So you just really just want to rack the hackle, um, draw all the fibers back, and then just go to town and wrap the whole hackle directly behind the bead. Make sure you get the fibers all the way back and go use up all the hackle. And then we get to that point. From here, it's gonna have a couple of turns over the top to lock it. And then one in front, just to lock that stem in. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna trim away the stem. Getting tight here. Now, the next part gets a bit awkward. So in order to just avoid having the thread bounce, what I usually do is a, is a couple of whip finish turns there just to lock the thread so that uh, if I bump it or twist it, it doesn't bounce over the bead and bounce around the place. So that's <clears throat> that's the uh, the hackle put on. Now the next step is is a little bit, seems a little bit awkward. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk you through it um, and then I'll demonstrate it. Um, but my fingers might get in the way. It's It's... And, uh, and so then at least you'll understand what, what we're going to do. So from here, we're just gonna make sure all the fibers are drawn back as far, all nice straight back along the body. Now, sometimes it can help if you just lick your fingers and, and just moisten those fibers a little bit and that helps sort of keep them under control and, uh, and just draw them back. The start point for the wire is basically vertically up from the hook. So you pull it, gently pull it up so that the wire protrudes from the top of the, through the top of the, the fibers like this. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do in the same action is I'm going to draw back these fibers, hold them with a gentle pinch at the base of, or at the bend of the hook. And then I'm gonna start wrapping the wire around it. Now I'm gonna do two turns 
directly here to lock the hook to lock the hackle down and then once I've done those two turns I'm then gonna open turn rivet all the way back up to the thread and then what you'll end up with is um, a, a bit of a tail coming out the back and this segmented looking body as we go forward okay so this is that's what's going to happen and we'll see how we go so I just draw the fibers back and I orientate the, the wire to the top and I just gently sort of hold those fibers there and then I'm just going to pass that wire underneath capturing all those fibers once and twice and then from here it's just simply open turns about a millimeter apart all the way back up to the bead. Once I'm back to the bead with the wire, I can then simply come across with the thread and a couple of turns to lock that wire off. And then I just weave away the wire. And that is the hackle, that's the hackle tied in. And then from here you can you can orientate, you know, you can just sort of tease out some of these fibers and make sure that they're uh, they're sitting the way you want them to sit. Now, as you can see, like I've probably been a little bit too generous, perhaps, with this um, the length of this hackle, but um, you know you can adjust that just by selecting your hackle. Um, this will still be fine, but it's probably a little bit longer than I normally do. I'd probably only bring those hackles to about four or five mil past the end of the bend, so about here somewhere this will work anyway right and that's the hackle tied in and as you can see you get this segmented effect and it forms the body of the fly so then uh, all that's left to do then is throw in the uh, in the the collar and uh, so just with a piece of cactus chenille I'm just going to come in I'm just going to catch it directly behind the bead a couple of turns and then you only really need two two turns two full turns so once and then twice and then catch it off and lock that chenille down directly behind the bead. Now you could probably do a few more turns if you wanted to, but I only ever do a couple of turns. Trim away the waste and then, uh, and then some whip finish. Directly behind the bead. And a couple more to be sure. and trim away the thread. And that is the one hackle nymph. Simple as that, really quite effective. Uh, you know, it drops really quick. You get a nice hot spot and you can vary the color of the hot spots. Um, and the soft hackle tail gives it a lots of, a uh, little bit of movement as it drifts down. And um, it, uh, it's, a, it's been a fairly effective little fly for me. Um, particularly in some of that faster water, you get a really nice big four millimeter bead on it. Or even if you wanted to do a four millimeter bead and a little bit of extra lead, um, then you can really drop it down. And you can get a nice, nice, uh, nice sink on it. So that's the one hackle fly, or one hackle nymph. And uh, hopefully, if you give it a crack, it works for you. Tie lines. Thanks for watching.